Welcome to Ash Wednesday service. We hope that you will set a space and and time for worship in this moment. Light a candle, gather with your family, gather with one another online. We know this year has been a little bit difficult and the Ash Wednesday looks a little different. So this year, um, we, instead of imposing ashes, we are giving away these burlap pieces that reminds us of the roughness in our life that we need to call on God, but also the ashes which we can touch and remember, um, ashes we were formed and ashes we will return. And there's a scripture on the back. And so we invite you to pick up one of these um, at our church office uh, along with a Lenten packet for you to observe the next 40 days until Easter. So why do we do this? We do this, brothers and sisters, because the early Christians observed the great devotion, the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be 40 day season of spiritual preparation. And during this preparation, um, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sin and had separated themselves from the community of faith to come in penance and be reconciled and forgiven. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed through the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. We invite you in this time today to observe Holy Lent, to do some self-examination and repentance, to go to the Lord in prayer and fasting and self-denial and reading and meditating on God's word. Let us go into this time of holy observation. Let's go to our Lord in prayer as we begin our time of worship. Lord God, we know that you are the maker of everything and you're also the judge of all that you've made. We also know that from the dust of the earth, you formed us. And our faith teaches us that from the dust of the earth, you will raise us up. And so as we begin this season of Lent, our prayer is that by the redemptive power of the cross of Christ, that you will create in each of us clean hearts and put within each of us a new spirit that we may each repent of our sins and then go on forward to lead lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
as we gather for a time of lament, a time of self-reflection, we turn to scripture in Psalm 51, David's lament, his confession, his prayer. And I invite you to turn to your um, scripture, your word, your Bible, to Psalm 51 and join me as we confess in prayer to God, verse 1 through 17. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice, where I have given have to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, will not you will not despise. Amen. So as we turn to God's word on this Ash Wednesday, we look to a parable that our Lord Jesus Christ told about two men who prayed. From Luke 18, verse 9, to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and everyone who humbles himself will be exalted. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. So of the 38 parables that Jesus told, This is the only parable that takes place in the house of God. Uh, The others are about families and farming, uh, management, 
and meals, uh, parenting, and parties. In this parable, Jesus contrasts two diametrically opposed attitudes that are so important to take note of as we enter this season of Lent. So we meet the first guy, the self-righteous one, the ultra-prideful guy. Did he really go to the temple that day to pray to God? We're told that he, quote, began praying to himself. That's the amplified version. He began praying to himself. You know, the fact is that, that he did not go to the temple that day to pray to God. He went to the temple that day to inform God of his long list of personal achievements. And he used prayer to announce how good he was. I mean, I mean this sounds more like a self-eulogy than a prayer, doesn't it? No, notice all the eyes that he uses uh, at this point. Seven times in two verses, uh, making himself the subject of this so-called prayer of his. I thank you, God, that I am not a sinner like everyone else. For I never cheat. I don't sin. I don't commit adultery. I fast twice a week. And I give a tenth of my income. Well, you know, we, we, we infer from, from what Jesus says that God is not impressed. And we aren't either, are we? This guy's saying to the community, hey, look, I'm praying. You know, Jesus often referred to the Pharisees as hypocrites. And the word hypocrite's interesting because uh, it's rooted in the Greek language of the theater. And it, it's about a person, it describes a person uh, putting on a mask to perform a role. That's the root of the word hypocrite. So again, Jesus, Jesus regularly refers to the Pharisees as those who put on a mask to perform a role. So here's this ultra prideful guy. So next we come, uh, we meet this ultra humble guy, th this tax collector. And again, we see what a heart Jesus has for humble outsiders. Not necessarily the religious establishment with their pride, but for humble outsiders. You know, prodigal sons and, and, and good Samaritans, prostitutes and tax collectors. He has a real heart for these people. So what about this particular tax collector who stands at the back of the temple this day and he beats his chest, beats his chest, and he won't even look up toward heaven. It's all about his attitude. The attitude that Jesus would have us to bring to him as we begin this high and holy season of Lent on this Ash Wednesday. You know, the, the world-renowned biblical commentator William Barclay notes that Jesus actually has this tax collector saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, the sinner. Not merely a sinner, but the sinner. And Jesus gets right to the point of the parable. God's grace cannot be received without humility. Now, as we work our way through Lent, our worship series, it, it focuses on God's grace. But God's grace cannot be received without an attitude of humility. Humility is essential to receiving God's mercy. And that's what we learn in this parable. Of this man, Jesus says, I'll tell you that this man 
rather than the other, went home justified or made right before God. You know, David, uh, Monica read Psalm 51, David's psalm of confession. David was justified, David was made right before God when he humbled himself and prayed for mercy and forgiveness and for cleansing in Psalm 51. And, and we heard this just a few minutes ago, again, that Monica read. I want to repeat just a verse of it. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me of all my sin. You know, it's this very attitude of humble repentance that touches the heart of Almighty Creator God. I remember reading about a tradition where God sent an angel to the earth to, to find the most precious gift to God. The most precious gift to God. Well, the angel saw the last drop of blood from a woman who had given her life as a martyr for Christ. Uh, the angel saw a widow's last penny that was given to the work of the Lord. The angel saw a slice of bread that a poor man gave to someone in greater need than himself. And these were all very precious gifts to God. And then the angel noticed a child kneeling by a stream praying. And this hard-hearted, this calloused-hearted man walked up to splash himself with the cool water from the stream. And he happened to notice the child. And this took the man's thoughts back to his more innocent days in life. And his heart softened when he saw that. And he knelt in prayer by that same stream. And he knelt in repentance by that same stream. And a tear flowed down this man's cheek. And the angel knew. The angel knew that that gift would be the most precious gift to God. And the angel brought that tear to God. So doesn't Jesus' parable here between the two men who prayed, doesn't it conclude, is conclude, doesn't its conclusion make perfect sense? For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. It's all about our attitude of humility as we enter this season of Lent and realize our dependence upon God's grace and God's mercy. You know, whether literally or figuratively this year, receiving that cross of ashes on our foreheads, it implies an attitude on our parts of, of humble repentance. As we begin our journey with Jesus to the cross where he gave his precious life for us. Amen. Show.
Sisters and brothers, at this time, let's pause and give thanks to God for our ashes that we'll be sharing this evening. Let us pray. Almighty God, you've created us out of the dust of the earth, and our prayer is that these ashes may be to each of us a sign of our mortality and our penitence, our repentance, so that we might remember that it's only by your gracious gift that we're given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the question that I would invite each of us to ask ourselves as we come to this point is what does God need to change in my personal life so that I may become more like Jesus Christ? Amen. Bienvenidos una vez más, estamos en este servicio recordando la cuaresma, lo que Jesús vino a hacer con nosotros y en este momento vamos a orar por lo que Cristo hizo. Es un momento que vamos a tomar para reflexionar, para orar, para ayunar y para poner todo en manos de Dios para que en esta cuaresma podamos cambiar y vamos a poner en manos de Dios todo esto. Damos gracias a Dios por todo lo bueno que es con nosotros, por este tiempo, Señor. Pero en este tiempo especial, en este miércoles que empieza la cuaresma, Señor, queremos agradarte, queremos retirarnos y queremos hacer tu voluntad, Señor. Permítenos, Señor, hacer como tú quieras, Señor. Que sea diferente a, a los demás cuaresmas, Señor, porque en este tiempo es diferente para nosotros, Tú lo sabes y tú lo entiendes. Gracias, Señor, por todo lo bueno que eres con nosotros. Ayúdanos a seguir adelante en este camino, Señor. Señor, te, te agradecemos que un día viniste a morir en la cruz por nosotros, Señor. Y en esta época estamos recordando todo lo que pasaste, todos los sacrificios, todos los desprecios y todas las cosas, Señor, que tú hiciste por nosotros, para que un día nosotros podamos venir y podamos ir allá al cielo contigo, Señor. Gracias, Señor, por todo lo bueno que eres con nosotros. Y, Señor, en este día estamos recordando que polvo somos y al polvo vamos a volver, Señor. Y tú nos estás recordando 
con, por este medio, Señor. Gracias, Señor, por todo lo que hiciste por nosotros en esa cruz del Calvario. Señor, bendícenos así como estamos, Señor. Y, y permite, Señor, que podamos reflexionar en esta época, Señor. Y que la bendición del Padre y la del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo vaya con nosotros y se quede con ustedes. Amén y Amén.